Exercise 4, Effects of Controls. The aim of this exercise is to understand how each control affects an aircraft in flight. The first thing we need to look into is that we will be flying a three axis aircraft. This means we can rotate in three different directions or around the three different axes. The axes we will be looking at are the longitudinal axis, which the aircraft rolls around. The ailerons on both wings are used to control the aircraft around this axis. The lateral axis, in which we pitch around. The elevator on the horizontal stabilizer causes the aircraft's nose to pitch up and down around this axis. And finally, the vertical axis, or the normal axis, which we yaw around. This is similar to a boat, which the rudder is used on the horizontal stabilizer. The aircraft which we fly at our school, the C-42, is designed to be positively stable. This means no matter what we do to the aircraft, it is designed to return to straight and level flight. Neutral stability is when no matter what we do to an aircraft regarding roll and pitch, it will hold and maintain the same angle of roll and pitch attitude until another input to the controls are made, at which point the aircraft will hold the new roll angle and pitch. An aircraft which is negatively stable is actually very unstable. If an input is made, the aircraft will progressively roll and pitch in that direction. Throughout all your flight training, you will need to use the horizon outside the aircraft as your primary reference point. Everything we do in the aircraft, we will always reference what is going on outside the cockpit. Now let's look through the controls we have on the Icarus C-42. We're going to look through their primary effects and their secondary effects. As we already discussed, the ailerons are used to roll the aircraft. We roll the aircraft by moving the stick either to the left or the right. Now the aircraft will not stop rolling until you bring that stick into the central position. This is the primary effect of the aileron. There is however a secondary effect of the aileron and this is known as adverse yaw. When we roll in one direction, the aircraft will yaw in the opposite direction. Now let's see why this happens. Imagine we are rolling to the left. We move the stick over to the left and we start to roll in. The left aileron comes up and the right aileron comes down. The aileron which has now come down is producing more lift as well as more drag. This will drag the right wing, producing a yaw to the right. The rudder allows the aircraft to yaw around the vertical or normal axis. This is the primary effect of the rudder. When you use the rudder foot pedals, not only will you yaw, the aircraft will start to roll and then slip. The reason for the aircraft wanting to roll is down to you causing one wing to fly faster than the other. In most aircraft, you will have a spirit level looking thing. This is known as a slip indicator. We will use this to check that we are flying in balance. All this means is that the airflow is parallel to the longitudinal axis. This is a good thing. Use small amounts of rudder to correct the adverse yaw when rolling. The elevator. By moving the stick back and forward, we are moving the elevator on the aircraft. This primarily will control our airspeed. Pull the stick back and the nose will rise. This increases the angle of the cord line to the relative airflow. This is known as angle of attack. A higher angle of attack will create more lift as well as more drag. The secondary effect of pitch control will be the sensitivity of all the surfaces on the aircraft. The faster you're traveling through the air, the higher the sensitivity will be, whereas the opposite happens at slower airspeeds. In the C-42 there is another stick between your legs. This controls the engine power. When you add the power, the aircraft will have a temporary airspeed increase. The nose will rise, resulting in the aircraft wanting to climb. Reducing the power does the complete opposite. Another effect of power is known as the slipstream effect. Add power and the aircraft will yaw. In the C-42 it will yaw to the left. This is all down to which way the prop is spinning. A column of air spirals off the top of the prop around the fuselage and into the vertical stabilizer. Use the slip ball and look over the nose to see this happening. When reducing the power, the aircraft will yaw to the right. This is due to the slipstream effect reducing. 
As well as this, when we add power, we increase the sensitivity of the rudder and the elevator. Now let's look at the flaps. Above your head is another lever. We have two stages of flap. Flaps must only be used within the white arc of the airspeed indicator. Flaps change the shape of an aerofoil, producing more lift and more drag. Therefore, they essentially allow us to fly at a slower speed without stalling. We can also fly at the same speed, however, we can have a much lower nose attitude. Trim is our kind of cruise control. We use the trim to give us a new hands-off speed. If we are flying along at 70 knots and want to reduce our airspeed to 60 knots, we raise the nose. The airspeed will reach 60 knots. However, if we haven't trimmed, when we let go of the stick, the nose will fall and the aircraft will accelerate to 70 knots again. If we trim the nose up, the aircraft would stay at 60 knots. The trim control is located on top of the stick. There is a button for trimming the nose up and for trimming the nose down. The trim tab itself is on the left elevator and is electronically controlled. Now let's talk about airmanship. Looking outside the cockpit. When we look out, we are looking for any other aircraft which could potentially be a conflict. If you see an aircraft, point it out even if you think your instructor has spotted it. Passing of control. When your instructor has finished demonstrating something to you, you will hear the words, you have control. Say back to your instructor, I have control. This lets your instructor know you have taken control of the aircraft. When you hear the instructor say, I have control, simply relinquish control of the aircraft and say, you have control. The reason we do this is so we know who is flying the aircraft. Two people trying to control the same aircraft at the same time never really ends well. Thank you very much for watching and getting this far in the video. Any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you did find this useful, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Fly safe.